Hi, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, hello. This is your girl, Tosh. I'm back for another episode. And today we're going to talk about Breonna Taylor and coronavirus with the side of politics. So let's just jump into it. So over the past month or so, we've had some really, really questionable incidents happen in the United States to the point where the rest of the world is probably either mocking us or looking at us like, you know, what is going on in the United States of America? Isn't it supposed to be the greatest country on earth? I I personally think it is the greatest country on earth, but we still have our own issues. So first and foremost, I want to send my condolences out to Breonna Taylor's family because I believe the results of the case that was tried um, was just completely, I I just can't believe what happened. So basically, if you're not in the know, I'm not sure how anybody can not be in the know, but If you're not aware, no officers were indicted for the murder of Breonna Taylor, even though she died by the hands of police. Uh, She was shot uh, while the police were basically serving a warrant in her apartment. Um, There's questions about whether they knocked or whether they didn't knock, whether it was a no-knock warrant or not. At the end of the day, my concern is the fact that there is a black woman that is dead and no one will even be tried for her death. So what does that say in 2020 and how did we get here? Well, a lot of people bring up qualified immunity and what that is, it's a law that protects government officials from lawsuits um, provided they're found to be performing their job responsibilities responsibly. So My key issue with that is the word responsible is very much subjective. Who defines what's responsible and what's not when there's a life that was taken, Um, especially in this case, right? So the police officers um, were not charged with her death, but one was charged with wanton endangerment, and he was basically charged with uh, endangering Brianna's neighbors when he shot into their apartment. So I'm struggling with the fact that We can charge someone who is performing the same job function as a, um, as a government official that doesn't kill a neighbor. They just endanger the neighbors. The neighbors are still alive and well, and he's going to trial for that. But there is another human being who's dead, who was shot, who is not getting the same form of justice. I just struggle with that. It's 2020 in America. Why is this still happening? Does anyone see anything wrong with this? I just can't. I just can't cope with it. There's no excuse. I, I don't understand how in the greatest country in the in the world, this can still be happening. Um, well, actually, I, I know it can happen. I'll take that back. But I don't feel it should be happening um, in, in 2020. This is just awful. So once again, um, condolences out to Brianna's family. Uh, The interesting thing about this law is that it protects the individual from um, civil cases, uh, but it doesn't cover the actual entity. So I'm not an attorney, but the way I read this, and I'm on the Cornell Law website, by the way, is that there may be a chance for a civil lawsuit against the actual institution. So like the police force, um, I don't know if they get to for negligence, but you know, there's, there's a message to be said when someone is, uh, charged with murder and convicted, I think it's just something that, you know, the people want to see in terms of just justice. And some people may be listening to this and may not understand why, um, certain people or demographic groups are so upset. This this is not okay. <laughs> so it, it just raises the question, what's the value of my life as a black woman? 
if I am killed in a, in an incident um, and I happen to be murdered by somebody, is it is it not a big deal? You know, I led a great life. I had a good run, but unfortunately I'm dead. And does the story end there? Or, or do I get to have justice like, like other people do? So unfortunately we're still having these conversations. I would love to get to the day when we are not having these conversations on race, but they're still very much pertinent and alive and well today. Um, and it just highlights the need for reform. So brings me to my next point. We're not there yet. We're not perfect as a country. So now more than ever, we need you guys to get out there and vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for at all. It's not my decision, not my choice, not my um, role to persuade you in one direction or the other, but please use your voice no matter who you support. And that is a great segue into this week's or last week's debates on Tuesday, I don't know if you guys watched that first debate, but I was blown away. Number one, both candidates were equally as disrespectful to one another. I was embarrassed as an American citizen. I thought, you know, the rest of the world's probably looking at us and laughing because to me, the tone of the conversation was, I know you are, but what am I? Like 50 times over. And I honestly tuned in to get a clearer picture of each candidate's platforms because I still was unclear what each candidate was offering in terms of their leadership as the next, uh, either the next president or an additional term for, for Trump. So I was just trying to gain some clarity and I am more confused now after trying to watch that poorly coordinated debate than I was before I listened in. I probably should have skipped that one out um, or sat that one out, but it was just awful. Um, so key highlights. <laughs> Speaking of being disrespectful, um, some of the key highlights that I noticed were, okay, on, on Trump's end, he told Joe Biden to never use the word smart with him because there's nothing smart about him. And he went down this list of failures from Joe Biden. I was like, oh my gosh, are we really doing this on TV? Like, <laughs> who says that? Only Trump. <laughs> and you know, not to, you know, leave Joe Biden out there in the wind by himself. He was disrespectful. He just blatantly said, you are the worst president of all time. And I'm thinking, you know, you guys might feel this way, but why we're really here, why all of America is tuning in right now and and people in other countries is to get a feel for your platform. We don't care about your spite for the other person. We know you guys don't like each other. Some of us don't like you. Maybe a lot of us don't like you either, but we we deserve to know since we're going to be voting very soon what you stand for and what you plan to do for the country. So I was very disappointed in how that went. Um, I was disappointed in the way those gentlemen conducted themselves, and I still have a clear picture of what they are looking to bring to the table. So hopefully uh, the next set of debates will be more productive and fruitful if we're going to have a debate. Why? Because now Donald Trump has coronavirus and I don't wish that on anybody. So hopefully he has a, you know, speedy recovery. Um, the internet, by the way, is dragging him right now, even with coronavirus. I don't know if you guys seen like Facebook or Google Donald Trump coronavirus. People are very uh, in my opinion, they're being very insensitive. Some people are making light of it. I, I won't do that just because regardless of my feelings towards either candidate personally or Trump, I'm not going to use his, his personal health against him. I, I don't want anybody to get coronavirus, but people are very upset with him. And I only bring that up to say, what kind of anger do you have to provoke in people for them to not number one, not have any sym sympathy for you having coronavirus, and number two, to make fun of it. I just I just think, is that where we are as a country? <laughs> what have we done to America to, to incite this type of anger and a lack of empathy? And, you know, I'm not siding with anybody. It's just like, wow, we are really messed up right now. And I think right now what we need is somebody that can bring us together. And another key point I would like to make is the fact that I was extremely disappointed when Donald Trump didn't grab the bull by the horns and publicly denounce 
white supremacy. It, it was, you know, right there in front of him. They gave him the opportunity to say it. Now, I think he was baited, but he didn't denounce it. And what he did say, whether intentional or not, incited more divisiveness because it was like a rally cry for all the white supremacist groups to, you know, start having enrollment meetings and intake meetings. And okay, we're standing by, sir, all over the internet. I'm like, oh my goodness, how did we get here as a country? This is awful. (laughs) I just can't believe this happened. We're in a really scary place in America. And um, I really hope we can, can, um, get a a leader in office that can bring us together. Now, I'm not saying Joe Biden is innocent either. If you look at his track record, he hasn't been the most supportive of civil rights or integration. He was against busing, as Kamala Harris um, mentioned during the Democratic debate. She called him out. It's true. Look at his track record. And he had just had some really odd really, really, um, really concerning logic for not integrating, you know, races. Like, oh, they want to be, they want to be, uh, you know, their own people. They want to identify with their culture. Um, and then there's a comment about his kids going to a school that's a racial jungle. I just, I don't know. Both men have questionable comments. More than one, by the way. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is just very hard to deal with. And America has a really tough decision to make in the next <clears throat> month or so. So like I said, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm equally as troubled on both sides. Um, but just make sure your voice is heard. There's talk about mail-in ballots being um, a scam. But if that's the only way you can vote, go ahead and do it. So you know, get your voice out there and make it happen. And that brings us to our next topic, my book. I haven't really talked about it in great detail for a while because I'm still working on it. Um, the, the text is done, but now it's going through editing. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get that back, but it's it's in the home stretch, folks. And I actually got my first pre-order. So the orders are rolling in. Yay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks to my supporters. Um, if you would like to order the book Ugly Alter Egos in advance of it being published, you can go ahead and go on my website at nattygalproductions.com. And that's gal spelled G-Y-A-L. So N-A-T-T-Y-G-Y-A-L productions.com. Uh, You can go to the bookstore or the shop and you'll see it there. It's $35 for the book and the workbook that will help walk you through some of the social issues that the book talks about. And I really appreciate your support. So shout out to people that have ordered already. Um, And if you just want to talk about it, ask questions, you can email me at info at nattygalproductions.com. Next on the docket, let's talk about quarantine and what it's done to people, particularly me. I'm just only going to speak for myself right now. I've had the roughest time with this. I thought this would be like a four month thing. I'd go back into my routine um, and things would go back to normal. I have been number one working from home since like March. (laughs) It is October. That's a long time. And I'm questioning if this is my new normal and I don't want it to be number one, because I've realized through this whole journey, I need human interaction. Um, I, I miss, you know, interacting with people at work. I miss going out to social events and bumping into people. I miss that. I've been doing a lot of zoom calls. Most of my human interaction every day is through, um, Zoom calls, Skype, or, you know, Messenger, and that's it. I might see a neighbor if I go and walk my dog. That's like the highlight of my day to see a real human in person and talk to them like six to 10 feet away. So um, I'm ready for things to get back to normal. But just thinking about it from a containment standpoint, I don't know if we'll ever get back to normal because every case is an opportunity to infect new people. And if we're not having a hard stance on quarantining, we'll always be doing this. It's kind of like the flu. People get the flu every year. I really hope this doesn't um, remain with us. 
this is just awful, but not to be negative. I want to leave you guys with some tips to survive coronavirus if you're struggling with it. So um, I personally have not given up on socializing. So if I do go out, I try to go to places that have great ventilation or outdoor seating so that you're not in a contained space for a prolonged period of time. Um, I, I try not to sit like right next to people, even if they are friends, try to space everything out. And if you can, if you're if you're not needing to socialize, you're just hungry and you don't feel like cooking, you can also um, take advantage of food delivery services. I've been using uh, DoorDash a lot, Bite Squad sometimes with more DoorDash than anything, and um, have no complaints there. But, you know, it's just a new way of doing things. Try to adjust. And then I've also joined some online groups to just connect with some new people and be more sociable virtually when possible. So that's been beneficial. And if you're really struggling, if you live alone and you may or may not have a pet, but your pet can't talk to you. So to all my single people out there that live by themselves, they don't have roommates. If you are struggling, please, please, please get some help. Talk to somebody, talk to a life coach, get some therapy. There's no reason for you to wallow in your own self-pity because you are not dealing with this lack of human interaction well. We're not we're not made to not be around other people. We need we need relationships. We need to be with other people. We need to relate to one another and I think it's a basic human need now more than ever that we connect. So, um please reach out if you're feeling that way. And if you're struggling with, you know, the loss of a job or your your economic future or your financial stability, um Take our, there are a few things you can do to ride the storm out. First of all, let's talk about our mindset. Um, I believe the coronavirus pandemic has changed the world forever in terms of how we operate. What do I mean by that? I mean, even after this is under control, we're, we're never going to do things again. Our focus has shifted permanently, in my opinion. So we're going to focus on doing things with more, more automation. You'll see things uh, program with robots. You'll see jobs taken over by machines because, you know, taking a human out of the process reduces liability. It, it sucks, but we're not where we used to be, you know, in January or February anymore. We have to think about limiting contact now. And I think that's forever going to be the case going forward. So as a result of that, uh, jobs that have uh, the need to be done or jobs that don't have the need to be done in person that require low levels of skills. I see those as prime targets to be replaced by some sort of automation. So if you are working a job and that was your main source of income, you really, really need to think about increasing your skill level to get into another role um, or to at a minimum get another job where your skill level is more complex than what you're doing right now. So if you're doing something that doesn't require any sort of formal training or school, um, you need to really think about, you know, hey, how, how do I want to grow? What certifications do I need to get? Because it's really hard to, it's hard to get a machine to replace the intelligence of a human if something that you're doing is complex and has a lot of variables in it. But if you're doing something repetitive, you're doing the same thing, um, over and over again, that's a prime target to get replaced by a machine. So I just want to throw that out there and take heart. Like demand for certain things didn't disappear. It's just shifted. Like a lot of people aren't eating at restaurants anymore, but they are ordering from home. So if you used to be a waitress or waiter um, and you're not working at your, your main business anymore, you can do food delivery. It's the same service. It's just packaged differently. There are things you can do to get over this hump. Also, things like going to the movies. That's a big no-no nowadays. But although people aren't really doing that, what are they doing? They're staying home watching Netflix and Hulu and things like that. So just think about how demand has shifted. And the thing about America is we capitalize on change. If you look at the stock market, there are winners when the market is up and there's also winners when the market's down because people are, you know, playing chess differently. So if you're in a down market, the market's changing and the market's going down, that's the perfect time to buy 
because when it comes back up, which it will, you will receive those, that equity. That equity is going to exponentially increase, right? Same thing if it's <clears throat> going up. You just have to pick your right position. So I want to challenge you guys to pick your right positions in life. Know how the market is changing, meaning the job market. Know how technology is changing. Make sure that you are investing in yourself so you're not left behind when the world changes in terms of technology and skills and resources and, and globalization. Um, and just, you know, take care of yourself. Do not wait for the government to take care of you because they won't. You guys have seen that the stimulus checks that were provided, although they were good, they were only $600. I can go through $600, you know, in a couple of weeks, much less a month. That will not pay for all of my bills at all. So <clears throat> when you have so many people that are affected, there's there's only so much that the government can do because there's millions of people that need the same level of help that you do. So don't depend on them to bail you out and make sure that you're protecting yourself and your family from financial risk. And just make sure that you're constantly investing in yourself to minimize that risk in your household. So I know that was relatively short, but that's all I wanted to say today. This, I'm using this as my digital diary. And that's what was on my mind. So, so in summary, protect yourself financially, mitigate that risk, get some skills and training. Don't depend on the government to support you. Get out there and vote and rest in peace, Brianna. We miss you. Take care until next time.